into the live stream. Welcome, it's Eric Roberts here. We're talking about f felt, hammer felt, damper felt. We're gonna be talking about really how to fix dampers, how to repair dampers, and what goes wrong when a piano damper goes bad. When it doesn't work anymore, there are some repairs, some fixes. I'm gonna outline some tools, I'm outline some glue, and uh, outline some processes that you can take as a piano technician on how to fix dampers when they are going wrong. So welcome into the channel. If you don't know me, I'm Eric Roberts. I'm a mentor for Apex Piano Technicians Network, actually a founder as well. And we're teaching people how to tune pianos, repair pianos, and start their own business. If you um, stay to the end, I'll show you how you can join at apexpiano.com. I'll give you a special uh, webinar offer that is just for this webinar. If you're new to the channel, if you're in the... Uh, in the mentorship, it's because of you guys that I'm talking about this. I've got some questions, so I'm gonna be putting this out here for inside the mentorship. I just have a lot of um, questions about this damper felt. So let me let me, let me me see who actually said uh, the question initially about damper felt, and then we'll get right into it. Let's see here. I think it was Joe uh, Bovey. Yeah, dampers not dampening all the way. What, what happens when dampers don't dampen all the way? All right, so that's uh, that's a good question, and and dampers are probably one of the most ah uh, they're they're tough. Dampers are are really really tough. So I'm gonna let's let's start out with the different kind of damper felts. That's what we'll do right now. I don't have a outline for this. I'm gonna go through what I really want to teach you, but I'm gonna show you some things you can buy. Some damper felts. We're gonna talk about uprights and grands. All right. So first of all, damper felt comes in different ways. It comes in these big long strips here. You can see these little strips. And you can use a damper felt cutter, which is this thing right here. And uh, I have one of these, and um, you can get these inside the store. If you're a member of Apex Panda, you can get these for a discount. If not, you can just find one on the internet somewhere. But a felt cutter, it's kind of like a guillotine or whatever. You stick the felt in there and chop it. So it's, it's actually a pretty brilliant little tool. Uh, you can't really cut felt great with just a knife. It's a lot better to have one of these cutters. It keeps it straight and everything. Uh, and you can also buy damper felt like this, which is just basically little pieces of felt that are already kind of cut. But if you're going to do a lot of work, you might want to get different sizes of damper felt. And there's uh, different kinds. There's the little, I'm going to show you in my studio. I brought some up from my uh, boxes. Uh, basically you have this, this is just the standard damper felt. It's just like a real soft felt. This would be used for like uprights and grands in the top part. Then you have this damper felt, which is like basically like a little bit of uh, like a, for like a big fat bass string. That's a damper felt we're going to talk about. And then you got this damper felt, which is like a little triangle, you know, a little triangle and it's on this board. So this, would, these are, these are uprights. I didn't find any grand damper uh, stuff. But then you have this damper felt, which is like for a tricord, it's got like a little split right in there. So you can see it's got a split. So it'll go right in between three strings. Okay, so I'm going to pull up some pictures. And I'm going to show you some pictures of this, this stuff too here in a minute. Uh, so you can see what kind of damper felts that I that I thought was interesting. Uh, let me go in here to my documents, and then I'll, I'll find those that folder. Um, let me just get this folder here. We're gonna to go to dampers. Where where is it? I I just I wanted to get this this webinar going, so I just jumped right on here. I'll find find out where all my pictures were that I that I took here. Damper repair. Okay, that's oh wow, that's a movie. So I did a big webinar on damper repair, and I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna do much of that. But here here's another uh, set of dampers, and I'll show you these if I can get my screen up here. So check this out here. Let's see if I can actually show you this. I'll have to open these individually. It looks like I'm going to have to individually open them to show you, or I'm going to have to share the right screen. Give me one second. I'm going to share the screen. I'm going to give you the, um, I'm going to give you the, uh, the entire screen of here. Yes, that's what I need. That's the entire screen. So they also come in rolls like this, so you can cut them apart. Okay, so that's one way you can buy the damper felt. Um, and then you can see, let me close this out. You can see this is how they kind of sit on there. You have the different types. You have the the flat kind, and you have that kind that has a split in the middle, and then you have... So there's just all kinds of different sizes and different kinds. This is some old damper felt. You can look in here. We're going to go through each one of these. These are your grand dampers, and these are sort of like smushed up old grand dampers. I'm going to talk about those. 
And that's some other pictures. These are some old, dirty, nasty grand dampers. And this is again in in the catalog some different kinds of dampers. So when you're when you're when you're at a piano, okay. So the, that's the dampers and the damper felts. And so as a tech, you want to get as much of that as you can if you're going to be working with dampers. But let's say typically you're in a tuning and the damper is not dampening all the way. You're generally not going to be replacing damper felt. You're typically not going to just run off and, and grab a bunch of damper felt and replace it. So we'll talk about the repairs in that. Let's look at, let me, let me close these out so you don't, you don't need these anymore. Let me show you uh, in terms of these damper felts right here. Uh, what I would do. Okay, so you get in there, you play. Uh, we'll talk about uprights first. Uh, let's see, damper, damper, what? Okay. All right, let's talk about uprights first. Let's find a picture of an upright. So you get in here, ignore the fact that this is missing four or five dampers. Now, if that, let's just start there. These are missing dampers, and somebody calls you and says, "Oh my gosh, my piano is key is broken." They'll say that. They'll say, "My piano key is sticking." And what they really mean is, my piano is ringing no matter what, or my piano won't stop ringing. In this case, you're going to have to have some in your car, and you're going to take something like this. You're going to take like a little, uh, you're, you see there's some missing ones there. So you're going to take like a little damper, just like this. That's what's missing from that picture. And you're going to take a little bit of glue. And this is the perfect time for me to show you this tacky glue. This is it. And you guys can screenshot this if you need to. The original tacky glue. This is the best damper glue I've ever used. It's like a PVC E glue. It's kind of sticky. It's really for like felt or something. It's like uh, Joanne Fabrics. It's a fabric glue, some sort of fabric glue, but it's called tacky glue. Tacky. So it, it's real thick, okay? And it's real like, um, it's just, I'm not going to stick my finger in there right now, but it's just, once you, once you put it on there, it's real thick so it doesn't soak in. And then when you put it on, it sticks to anything. Before it dries, it sticks. So how you would repair this right here where it's missing a damper is you would put some glue on this damper while the action is in the piano and you would take your little tweezers and you would put it, put it, put it down in there and you'd pull back with your finger that little spring, you'd stick it in there and you'd just stick it on there and, and you'd line it up to where it was working. Now the tacky glue works immediately. It's already working immediately. It's gonna tack on there. And so just put the tacky glue on there and, and it'd be done. Um, then I came up uh, to, to these here, these old dampers. These are old dampers, and sometimes they don't stop the noise all the way, or sometimes they click. When they hit, the, when they hit, hit they go like, kr, kr, or click, click, click. You know, they, they're making all that noise. So what you can do, the one thing that I've found that works on an old piano, you're just trying to rescue it, just trying to get, um, get it kind of fixed just for now, and then get on with uh, your life. Uh, and tune the piano is you're going to take these little dental uh, I guess they're dental forceps things I guess dental uh, I don't know what forceps would be um, they're not forceps they're dental tweezers and I have a pair of these I've shown them to you guys and these would work too um, dental tweezers dental you know th this isn't them but this this would work you see those little tweezers right there so you would take those little tweezers and you would get right on, so I'm going to show you this, you'd get right on the felt, you know, right right on the felt, right while it's on the string, you could lift it up, and you're just going to squeeze that old damper just like that, okay, with the little tweezers, you're going to squeeze. And um, when you do that, I'm going to type in dental tool, because I think I will be able to find a better dental tool, uh, scissors. I don't even know what they're called. What are those little things called? Ah, here they are. I don't know what they're called. Let's 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 imagine that they're called Kelly forceps. Oh, stainless steel curved blade. These are the perfect tool for that. You can reach right in, squeeze on those. Okay, you squeeze on those on those dampers, just right right here, just right where you can squeeze on them, and they're going to. Um, I don't know. It just it's sort of like if it works, it works. It'll it'll start holding on because sometimes these this style damper on this old upright will get really big and it spreads way out. So it's lost some of its elasticity. And you can save them just by squeezing on them. Okay, that's that's one. Okay, so let's let's go let's look at some other dampers in uprights. Okay, this would be this picture's kind of small, but again, there's missing dampers here. But these dampers are on uprights, and if they're not blocking all the string if they're ringing or what i call speaking if they're speaking what you can do is you can take a little bit of there's a couple things okay you can wiggle them around make sure that they're touching 
on the top here and the bottom. Make sure they're touching on the top and the bottom. You want to make sure that the, it's touching the strings up here and down here. So you may be able to reposition the damper a little bit, move it around. Uh, but more likely, you can take a little piece of sandpaper and just sand this little place, right? I'm talking like a 300 grit sandpaper. You can sand a little bit, just tiny bit, fluff up the fibers right on the face of the damper. That might work. This is for old kind of dampers. The other thing I've found that really works is take my needle voicer, my single needle, and poke it into the side and just sort of fluff, fluff it up a little bit. What happens to these dampers, they get old and then they get really smushed down. And so they just get to where they're not making any noise. So you just, just fluff it up, take your little rapid voice or scrape the back, you know, just try to get some of that new felt to kind of show and that might work. Okay. That there's a, there's also a damper spring more, more technically on this damper head that's pushing it against the string. So if, for example, you can see the damper is being pushed against the string and if the damper spring is weak, it's like, eh, it's, it's just laying on the string. It's not being pushed in. So you could, um, I never do this, but you could get involved in putting a new damper spring on, or you could do that. But I find that working with the damper head is more, is more helpful than anything. And it, it takes a lot less time. So I just mentioned that because there is a spring there holding it. Okay. And so let's see if we have any up more uprights. I don't have any more uprights. That's the biggest, the biggest kind of things about the uprights. If you get into a situation, let's, let's, let's look at this, um, this little tiny thing here, you have, you have actually different, uh, there, actually this is another thing that happens with this upright damper, how it's laying inside the damper, it's laying inside the strings. I mean, what happens is, what will, what will happen is there'll be some green stuff that gets built up on the sides of this piece of felt, like right here. So you have some green stuff on the, on the sides of the felt. And so it'll look like maybe even like this, you'll see, I'm going to draw on this one so you can see it. You'll see like a little line right there where it's been sitting on the string. Okay. And it's a little green line and it might have a little indentation too. You can also sand that. You can also, if it's, if it's not sitting straight in there, you can actually sand that off a little bit, kind of just try to get some clean surface and, and then set the damper back in there. Okay. The damper has to be touching both strings. So it's going to sit on the string like this. Okay. So it's going to sit on the string. It has to be touching equally, you know, the front and the back it has to be sitting straight down on the string. Now, if this is the string, I'm going to try to make this a little, little thing here. If this is the string and it's sitting on the, the string, but it's sitting crooked, like it's touching, what will happen is it'll just touch the front, but the back won't be touching. So you have to sort of get the damper sitting straight and touching both at the same time. It might be sitting like this, so it's touching the back, but not the front. So you can see if it's out of whack or if it's twisted, okay, if, if we, we've got it sitting on the string like this, but it's twisted like this to where it's, it's not sitting straight. It has to set straight in terms of this way and it has to sit straight in terms of this way. So if you notice the damper is going down and it's just touching on the tip, but it's not straight, or if it's touching, if it's crooked and it's not touching, uh, then it's not going to work. Any of these will not work like that. So let me show you, and this happens a lot more on, on grand pianos. Uh, I had some pictures that would be, that would look good. Uh, man, those are just old nasty dampers. I had some pictures here. Uh, this might be, this might be relevant here. Let's see. This picture might be relevant. You've got this damper here, this grand damper, it's kind of small, but what you have is, oh, there it goes. It's kind of big now. What you have is if this grand damper is not sitting absolutely straight, and this is very, very, very finicky. If it's not sitting absolutely straight on this string, it will not necessarily mute. If it's twisted, when it comes down, if it's, if it's, if the front felt is touching, but the back is not, or if the back is touching and not allowing the front to touch. So if it's, if it's off that way, or if it's twisted, it will not sit straight and it might let one of the strings dampen. So on a grand piano, and you can do this with either, but on a, we'll talk about it in grand because this picture is kind of good. If it's touching the middle string and the right string, but the left string is the one right here. That's not, that's still sounding. You you'll be able to isolate these three strings one at a time while you're playing 
the piano and listen to which one it's not dampening. And then you can kind of decide which way you need to turn it. Sometimes you might twist the damper a little bit so it touches that third left string a little more. Sometimes it's not touching that third left string and it's just getting in. It's not really doing its thing. Um, and then sometimes it is touching the, the other two and it's not touching there. Or the back touches first. So I'm going to give you guys one tip. And this is one thing that I'll do and, and, and a lot of techs will do this. I'll have a little mirror, like a little makeup mirror. And I want you to try this, if you can do this, take a little makeup mirror, a little, I have a little round mirror, it's a little like two inch mirror, and I set it behind the damper. So I'm looking at the piano, I'm looking at the damper, and I'll set it behind the damper so I can see through that mirror exactly when and how and at what angle the back felt is touching. It's very hard to see that by sticking your head in there. So take a little mirror and stick it behind there, and lift the damper up with your foot, and then slowly set it down and just see that the whole damper sets down very evenly. If it sits down, uh, what will happen is if it's not sitting even, here's what will happen. The damper will go down like this. You'll see it going down straight and then it'll hit the string and go frunk. It'll just sit into the straight. It'll sit down. It'll go frunk. It'll, it'll do that. It's kind of hard to see the angle with my hand. But if the damper is wrong, it'll go down like it's getting ready to touch the string. As soon as it touches the string, you might notice it going it sits down in there like and then you lift it up and the damper's twisting like that you lift it up you set it down it moves so you want it to set straight down like that you want it to set straight down boom and touch you don't want it to touch and go you know like it's sitting into the strings wrong okay you want it to set straight down in you don't want it to set down either like this sideways you don't want it to set down and the back touches and then it goes funk or you don't want to set it down and the front touches and the back is still up. So you're looking at the damper for this way movement and you're looking for the damper for this way movement back and forth. Sets straight down in there and doesn't twist when it touches. You will notice that um, a well-regulated grand piano with dampers will set straight down. They'll all set straight down. They won't, they won't you know, shift, but if they get old or if they get weird, like this one in this, this picture that I have here, uh, got got really old and gross. Let's see, um, like these right here. Now these are old dampers, and see they're kind of mushed in. They have like mushed parts. They're not all the way through. These would be a problem, and so you're gonna have to go through these and s sort of try to re um, shape them by just sanding or poking or you know manipulating the felt by hand until they're sitting straight. Or you might have to replace dampers that are giving you problems. Replace those. Um, here's an example. You know, these piano dampers are just all over the place, obviously. But you have some grand dampers that are flat. And then you have some that are the tricord that have the, the little slit in the middle. Those are very sensitive dampers. And so you really got to work on those. And then you have this old damper right here. This old set of dampers. Now this is one of those problems where it's probably like mushed up felt, the, they're not sitting straight, they're kind of crooked. You're gonna have to go through and find which notes are speaking. And it might just be one single string of this damper is speaking when it sits down. So you can fluff this felt up, you can take the damper head off, you can kind of sand the bottom. You could just put a new piece of felt on this damper and set it back down in there and it would be really it would be really great if you have the felt and, the, and expertise to do that. Uh, you just have to have the right felt and you have to be able to um, you know quote the job and, and tell your clients this is what I'm gonna be doing. And they're like, okay, yeah, we need you to fix this. So this felt comes in all different sizes, all different shapes, all different thicknesses, all different softnesses. I, I mean, softnesses, that's, I don't know if that's a word, softnesses. Anyway, it comes in all of these different things. It's, it's mostly getting the damper positioned correctly so it sits perfectly straight on there, making sure the felt is not old, crusty, green. Those, those dampers can be replaced. Sometimes if you have a whole piano of dusty green, just yuck, hard felt, it's not going to, it's gonna, it's gonna hit the, the damper felt's hit and go bzzz, bzzz. I mean, you can, you can restore that by sanding off that green stuff. You can restore that by poking and, and that, but it's, that's just sort of an easy, quick fix. If you wanna really fix it, you find the right size of felt and then you replace all of it. If you were going to replace all the dampers on a piano, let's talk about that, or even like, let's say five dampers, 
What you're going to do on an upright or a grand is you're going to remove the damper head, you know, like the actual damper head. Then you're going to take off the old felt and the pad and everything. Uh, you're going to take it all off. Then you're going to scrape it or like when I did a lot of them, I'm using a Dremel tool to get all the old glue and felt off of that wood piece. So you've got your damper head. And then you're going to glue the new dampers on inside the piano. So what you want to do in an upright, if you were going to replace 15 dampers, you'd probably want to just leave the damper heads in the piano. Take the action out. Take the felts off. You can either, you can probably just pull them off with your hand and then take a Dremel tool or um, a blade and scrape, scrape off that stuff. And then put the action back in the piano. So remember that. Put the action back in the piano without the felts. Then you're going to take the felts. You're going to take some glue, put it on. You're going to take this tacky glue like I showed you earlier. You're going to put it on the damper. And then you're going to lift up, lift back the damper head, stick it in, position it perfectly, and let it, let the let the let it sit there against the string and let it dry there against the string. That's the best way to do it. Even in a grand, the same way. You wanna you wanna get the dampers. Um, a grand's a little bit different because a, a grand, I think you can either way. Sometimes you can just take off the dampers, glue the damper felts back on, and then when you put them back in, you have to adjust the damper just perfectly on there. So it's it's tedious and it's a very technical job that you're gonna have to do. Um, so now I'm going to end this webinar. I'm going to find something for you, though, special. If you want to join in and you want to be a part of Apex Piano Technicians Network, so if you want to be a part of the Apex Piano Technicians Network where we're learning more and more about how to tune a piano and how to actually do all of these things, if you want to be a part of that, learn how to build your own business, if you want to learn how to, let's see if I can move this up here. Um, I'm trying to find this little special. I have a coupon right now. It's for, it's really mostly only for um, these webinars. And I, I might just have to tell you, I, I might not be able to find it. Uh, I'm going to find the, I'm going to find the coupon code. You know what? The best way for you to do it, if you want to save, you can actually go ahead and send me a message. You can email me, go to the website, ask for the discount for the webinar, ask for the webinar discount. I will send you a webinar discount. Uh, a, a great webinar discount it, and it, it changes depending on the webinar you're in all you have to do is go to the website apexpiano.com uh, and then when you're there you can get your three free lessons so you can actually get three free lessons right here you can get your three free lessons and then you can actually contact me from this website ask me for the webinar special before you sign up I will send you a very special coupon that you could join in and take your whole mentorship right through Apex Piano. You'll be able to get into this uh, social network. You'll be able to get into starting to become an actual certified piano technician. So again, it's Eric Roberts, Apex Piano. This webinar gives you some advice about how to deal with dampers. Uh, when you hear a speaking damper, when you know you get the call, hey, my dampers are this and that, you just have to be prepared to really... MacGyver and, 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 and know what's going on. Listen to it, watch it, decide what you're going to do. Use some of these tips. Your, your goal is not to replace all the dampers in the piano. You're not, your goal, that's really not the goal. The goal is to make the ringing stop. So do some of those things first before you jump into like a massive job um, to, to replacing all of them. If there's a few speaking dampers, you're just going to mess with them. I'm doing some other things in the mentorship. I did this on a really nice grand piano some really issues with that green stuff forming on a grand piano and I and it took me forever just to lubricate the different parts make sure the damper's sitting straight make sure the spring is right make sure the damper's not twisting make sure the felt is clean make sure it's touching all places and that piano took me a little while to figure out but I'm going to put that in the mentorship I have some videos of me actually doing that process in the field so that's more like what we do in the mentorship you'll see in field videos all right god bless